So, Katori, your work, uh, Mount Top is heading to Broadway in the fall. Yes. And uh, you have some... So what else is going on? What is going on in the world of Katori Hall? Oh, there's so many things going on. Um, I'm about to start a workshop um, of a new play called What the Blood Clot, which is uh, commissioned by the Women's Project in New York City. And um, What the Blood Clot is a very interesting play. It's about an Upper East Side socialite who's white, um, who wakes up one morning with a Jamaican accent after a stroke. She has acquired foreign accent syndrome, which is a real disease, by the way. You can go Google it, go on YouTube, you'll find some examples of this. <laughs> and the entire play is all about how this kind of um, overprivileged woman um, comes to terms with her privileged and her, her privileged status in the world and her mm -hmm. whiteness and mm -hmm. and um, she kind of the world is kind of like cracked open as this new identity is imposed on her like there's a scene where you know she's in um, um, Prada and um, she meets Beyonce and <laughs> she wants to buy the whole shop and so in order, for, <laughs> in order for her to buy the whole shop she has to get a pre-authorization from her bank because it's like hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. and um she sounds like the jamaican nanny and so they like freeze her account so it's like you know <laughs> a very like comical you know yeah. um exploration of how we perform identity in america today so that's, that's really cool that's the new thing that i'm working on we're going to do a workshop in february and we're hoping to um, produced in spring of 2012. Yeah. So that's, that's amazing. That's the new that's come up in my mind. Um, and then I'm, you know, prepping a collection of plays. Um, uh, there's going to be a collection called Katori Hall Plays One. That, <laughs> that will <Looking> be this <laughs> by Methuen um, in September. And um, The Mountaintop is also going to be published as well um, mm -hmm. for the Broadway production. Um, what else is going on? I I mean I stay as busy, y'all. I stay as busy. Uh oh, I'm working on um uh, slight rewrites for Hurt Village. Um, one of my plays. Um, I'm talking with. Um, I really can't. I can't say it yet. But um, it's a theater in New York. I think they gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> Abundance. abundance. <laughs> it's really a moment of abundance, which is really, really cool. I'm living in um, a moment. I'm learning how to manage my abundance. So. There's a, there's so but but on that, there's a lot that's going on with you and, mm -hmm. and how do you what is that like? What is it what is the experience of this? Well, I mean sometimes you just every morning you kinda of get up and you feel a little bit overwhelmed, but you also feel blessed at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my God, I'm 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 busy, but I'm busy doing something that I love to do and I'm busy getting my voice out there and I'm busy busy telling these stories that I think need to be heard. Mm -hmm. So um, I always try to focus on the fact that um, you know, it's it's way more good than it is bad, but then sometimes I'm like, please y'all just give me a day of rest where I don't have to write or how think I just need to lay in the bed, you know, with the covers up to my neck and just like eat popcorn. Uh -huh. <laughs> so <laughs> writers need those days too. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, there's something you said yesterday in the convening mm -hmm. that um, about the Huxtable play. And, oh yeah. And Eric asked this question beautifully. What 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 was that? Say it again. The question was, you mentioned at the uh, roundtable discussion on mm -hmm. diversity that we cannot have two plays. In America, we can't have both the Project House play and the Huxtable play. Mm -hmm. There's not room enough for both of those. Mm -hmm. and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about that. Well, I think it has more to do with how the institution of the of the American theater is set up. I feel as though African American playwrights, in particular, are always trying to buy over the one spot, the one February spot, mm -hmm. and this is just something that has historically just been a part of the American theater scene. And I feel as though, you know, as a black person who knows there's so many different experiences in, in our communities, there is room for all these different types of voices. But it seems like sometimes, you know, the institution as a whole will only honor one story or like this, like the Huxable play is in vogue now, or the ghetto play is in vogue mm -hmm. now, or, or plays that are set in those various places. But the thing is, 
where a play is set does not define what the play is. Yeah. It's just, you know, a setting. There, there are characters, there are ideas being explored in each of these, you know, different types of plays and different types of settings through different types of writers. Like, you know, I often find that sometimes, you know, um, I've, I've gotten into weird situations where my agent will call people and be like, you know, why don't you do a Katori Hall play? And they'll be like, well, we already did this black playwright, so we can't do a Katori Hall play next season because we just did this one this past yeah. season. But you know, you ask somebody like Andy Baker, you know, does Andy Baker come to turn? Do people say, oh, we've already done a Lucy Thurber play this season, we yeah. can't do your play. And I, that's what I mean about how, you know, sometimes it feels that we can't exist in, within the, the American um, theater world, but that we, mm -hmm. we should be able to exist and we should be able to be produced. And you know, there's two brilliant ghetto plays, you know, that's the ghetto in one season, you know, those two should be produced. Yeah. But you know, it, it's all about being, inclusive of how diverse our experiences are within within the culture. Yeah. I mean, we, we're talking a lot about this word abundance, and it sounds like there is an abundance of stories out mm -hmm. there. There are abundance of ideas out there. So allowing, admitting that, mm -hmm. and allowing that to show itself yeah. in these institutions. Yeah. And as a black player, you know, we're constantly struggling, and it's like, it's almost like, you know, they pit one of us against each other, and I, I always, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, you know what, I've been threatening to write this play called August Wilson is Dead. <laughs> because, you know, theaters like, they're like, okay, we're going to do a black player, we're going to do August Wilson. But it's uh -huh. like, you know, have you heard of Kelly Gerard? Have you yeah. heard of Derek McFadder? Have you heard of Darren Kennedy? Have you heard? It's like, there are so many different playwrights out there who are young and yeah. hungry, and no one knows about them because they're supposed to do the damn August Wilson play. So. Well, that's really, that's, that's something to sleep on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Katori, I've asked, we've asked everyone this. What do you see as the future? You know, I think in theater. Yes, or, in, I mean, yes. I feel as though we are going to learn how to use technology in a way that will um, help disseminate our art in a, in a, in a better way and, mm -hmm. and I think it'll help us have more or create more bridges with different types of communities. Yeah. I feel as though historically American theater specifically has just been, you know, um, really stuck in, and contained in this kind of like um, white male privilege gaze and I feel as though because there's so many different types of people and voices that are coming to the table and and demanded that they they sit at the table that um, we are going to um, the break the the glass ceiling that you know sometimes American theater has and we're just going to like you know break through and just like have all these different people represented and, and mm -hmm. not only in terms of culture or but in terms of gender in terms mm -hmm. of aesthetic I really mm -hmm. feel as though we are moving to a place where um, People are just crashing through the gate, and and it's very profound for me. And I I love being a part of this moment, you know, because um, there's so much to talk about. Yeah. There's so much to talk about, and um, so many talented people out there too who are writing and telling their stories. Yeah. Who are some of those people? Name, give us some of those people, so we know. The, on New Play TV. Oh yeah, Abundance is real. Abundance we'll, we'll well, like I was mentioning there. before, like there's you know there's this girl Kelly Gerard who just graduated from Columbia. She's great. She she started um, the Fire this time, which is like a, um, a a group of you know black artists who are trying to redefine what black art and black theater is. Mm -hmm. um, there's Dominique Maruso. Mm -hmm. um, there is. Um, What's Gita's life? I, it's not Gita really. There's like a, a young Indian uh, writer, female writer out in the Bay Area. Gita, she's amazing. Um, it's just, just so many, you know, people who are just like, you know, bubbling, you know, beneath, you know, the institutional, yeah. you know, people yeah. who, are, who are well known. It's the whole crop of, of generation that's um, writing these very interesting stories. Camille Darby, she has this play called Lord's Resistance. Which is about the Lord's resistance, uh, like uh, this um, uh, middle class black family um, adopting this boy who's a former child soldier. Oh wow! Isn't that ama that's oh, an amazing oh, wow. story that hasn't been told? Wow. How amazing yeah. is that? So that's what I'm talking about. Like just very interesting, complicated stories about our new America, our now, our yeah. today. So that's that's who I'm I'm vibing off of. That's cool. Thank you so much, Katori. You're for, welcome. Well, thanks for inviting me. Of course, of course. Yeah. So next up, y'all, we're going to have Jamie Galoon is going to discuss with us 
the uh, how these things get, came together, and then Eric is going to interview uh, Polly Carl, uh, editor of Howl Round and also from Stephen Wolf Theater Company. All right, so see you in a bit. <laughs>